test. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Great. Are we ready? Okay. I'm Gretchen Curtis. I'm a co-founder and chief strategy officer of Piston Cloud Computing. And uh, this is the analyst perspective on OpenStack from the outside looking in. So um, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Yeah, my name is Krish Subramanian. I'm a, a founder and principal analyst of a boutique analyst firm called Rishi Dot Research. As a disclosure, I have a bias towards open source. Hi, uh, Gary Chen from uh, IDC. Uh, I'm a research manager there, and I cover server virtualization software and something we call cloud system software, which is um, stuff like OpenStack. Hi, uh, Sean Michael Kerner. I'm a senior editor at Internet News, which is the news service of uh, Quinn Street, a bunch of websites, eWeek, uh, Internet News, Datamation, Server Watch, eSecurity Planner, Enterprise Networking, and I manage a site called Linux Today. Uh, and my, my uh, Full disclosure is I have a strong, strong bias toward Linux. And uh, I'm Stephen O'Grady. I'm the co-founder of Redmonk, a developer-focused analyst firm. We've been doing uh, cloud for really as long as it's been a term. Um, so, yeah, that's me. All right. So I have a few uh, questions prepared ahead of time, but um, what I'd like to do is start off with those and then open, um, open the panelists up to questions from the audience. So... Um, but before we start, could I see a quick show of hands how many people we have here that are press? Nobody. Haha, -ha, you were trying to hide. <laughs> how about analysts? Any analysts? <laughs> Got it. All right, how about PR and marketing for um, a company in the ecosystem? Okay, how about devs? Any developers? And who are the rest of you guys? Operations. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. So, um, first question: uh, What are people telling you guys about OpenStack? Uh, what would you characterize the buzz as being mostly positive, mostly negative, um, and how much of this feedback is coming from press and Twitter versus actual customer interviews? Uh, I'm, I'm hearing both positive as well as negative uh, uh, feedback from uh, customers as well as folks on Twitter. Uh, when you say folks on Twitter, it's not some random uh, group of people. I follow a select group of operational pe operations people on Twitter who are, we, we, have, we are a close-knit group there, and I get their feedback. So based on that, I get either uh, overwhel overwhelmingly positive feedback or total uh, negative feedback, like it's a piece of crap. I cannot install it. I cannot get it. So right, right now, it's like uh, both positive as well as negative. That's, that's, my, that's, that's what I hear. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for me, I mean, I definitely hear both. But um, I mean, I think it's mostly on the positive side that, that people are excited that there's a new technology out there. Um, there's a new community project. I mean, you know, and, and there's certainly some rough spots and things along the way. And, you know, if it's early code, maybe people have problems with it. But, you know, I, I think people are um, fairly optimistic that, you know, for the future that, um, that it'll be um, in, in a really interesting technology. Um, but, I mean, I think the main way I would characterize it um, among people who are not, like, you know, I mean, most of you are, like, really involved in the OpenStack community, so I think you understand it really well. You understand open source really well. But, I mean, I talk to a lot of enterprises that don't really understand open source. So I think it's a lot of the things... Um, that we went through with Linux, you know, how do I start using it, who's doing it, um, you know, I, I tried it out and it didn't work, but, you know, they were just downloading kind of raw open source from, from, the, uh, you know, from the project page, that kind of thing. So, you know, I, I think um, you know, there's a lot of people that are just not, you know, really, I mean, they may use open source, but they, I don't think, I don't know if they really understand that process and the difference between community and, and commercial versions and things like that, so. For me, on my side of the fence, I'm seeing, uh, I'm high on OpenStack, but uh, it's at the crescendo of the hype cycle where eight out of 10 press releases I see where anyone mentions the word cloud, which is a requirement to beat my spam filter, uh, has the word OpenStack compatible in there. Uh, and OpenStack is a metaphor for anything being open source and most of these companies are not. Uh, so it's the, for me, and the inbound stuff that I see, OpenStack today is the information superhighway of uh, 2001. It's everywhere, it's anything, it's everything. 
uh, though of course everyone in this room knows better. Uh, and I think from my perspective, this is a comparison I've made a couple times actually probably with some of the people in the room. Uh, you know, we see OpenStack as not being terribly dissimilar from MySQL uh, in the sense that there's a lot of buzz about the size of the community, there's a lot of buzz about the size of the ecosystem, uh, and there is a, you know, we feel a fair amount of complaints about the technology. Uh, many of those technology sort of complaints have been addressed from release to release. But, you know, I think that the criticisms that we, we do see tend to be in a relatively technical nature. You know, they'll point to, you know, R-Sync being, you know, for core parts of technology, things like that. You know, but uh, that is, I would say, sort of largely drowned out by uh, positive uh, feedback on the size and sort of momentum and number of participants. Mm -hmm. just, just to cut in on you for a second, because with MySQL, I know the Oracle guys love love MySQL, of course. When I talk to Oracle, though, they're not high on OpenStack, though, so, but they are high on MySQL. So I don't know how that relates, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the point wasn't to actually try to make a direct line comparison between the two projects, but rather the kinds of uh, feedback that they tend to, to gather publicly. All right. So um, a common criticism of OpenStack is that it's, um, it's a commercially uh, driven open source project as opposed to a developer driven project. Um, and that the marketing around the project has far surpassed any development work and has been far too aggressive for where the project is from a technical standpoint. So, um, in your opinion, is this true? And what would be the best way for the community uh, to address this criticism? I'll jump in. It, some of that criticism comes from the Linux side where people are used to Debian and Slackware, and that was the basis, right? So everything started the community and then companies came first. Here it's the other way around. So that's just the historical context. When I see it on the press side, because we all grew up with Debian and Slackware and then Red Hat afterwards and then SUSE and then Ubuntu, etc. Here it's going the other way. In my case, like uh, I also, as you said, I come from uh, the Linux era, so I thought there is way too much marketing going on. So I did a post saying that uh, probably developers should get upper hand and not the marketing people. But uh, immediately after I published that post, I got, uh, I got pushed back from lots of uh, people who are not associated with Rackspace or OpenStack. They told me that you need that kind of marketing, especially when the comp competing uh, players like VMware and uh, uh, Cloud uh, Citrix are unleashing that kind of a bullshit against OpenStack. You need this kind of marketing to sort of neutralize that uh, that the anti-OpenStack uh, uh, campaign that's going on. So probably I see their point, and uh, the, in my opinion, there should be a proper, mi a proper mix of uh, um, uh, marketing as well as the, the de developer voice. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I also am worried that sometimes developers feel frustrated that uh, marketing takes more precedence over uh, their own voice. So I guess. Uh, Keeping a level of uh, transparency might help to tackle that problem. Yeah. Well, well, I, I'm sure that we all, uh, we, we probably all would address that differently from our perspective. Uh, Redmonk is sort of most focused on developers, most focused on practitioners. So, you know, we obviously talk to many of the vendors involved and they'll brief us on products and so on, but at the end of the day, the most important feedback that we get is either directly from developers or, you know, we will mine quantitatively a variety of developer-related sources, right? So, you know, this will give us, hopefully, you know, sort of in an ideal situation, both qualitative and quantitative feedback in terms of the people actually using the technology, you know, as opposed to the marketing. and. You know, I think on the larger question, really the only difficulty, you know, that, that you know, I, I would see with too much marketing is, is that people show up and their expectations aren't met and then they leave and don't come back. Um, you know, that's really apart from that, it's very difficult to have too much marketing, you know, because, I mean, that's like having too much visibility. How is that a problem? And thus far, at least, you know, with, uh, uh, with OpenStack, we really haven't seen that. You know, there have been... It's not as if you had an initial wave of adopters, everybody showed up and left. You know, over the past couple of years, you've had more and more people showing up, so. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Steven. I mean, I think, I don't think you can have too much marketing, right? I mean, you, I mean, 
it's uh, the cloud battles are happening, right? Everyone's fighting for ecosystem, fighting for developers, and um, you know, I mean, um, you know, and you know, there's always going to be some hype buildup that you know that you're not going to be able to control, and, and people like you know, like Stephen said are going to have expectations <coughs> that, that might not be met at, at some early stage. But um, you know, I think that's just something that just kind of comes along with you know having a, a highly visible uh, project. Um, you know, I think individual. I think the whole individual developer thing, I mean, it is going to be a lot different. You know, if you looked at stuff like, you know, Linux, uh, and even some of, like, some of the Android, like, enthusiast community or something like that. I mean, that was something that individual people worked on as hobbies, and it was something that they kind of used themselves personally, you know. And, you know, I don't know if it'll be a similar thing, because, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to, like, you know, want to run a cloud on, you know, at home or something like that. So it might entice a, a different sort of developer community, something that's more comfortable. Focus. I don't know if that's necessarily bad. I mean, it's just that um, you know that's that's what the market is for, and that's who the participants are. But you know, I think that there's a, a diverse amount of participants. Then you know, it could it could work out. I mean, um, I mean, I think the the good thing about Linux, if you look at you know like like Linus, how he runs Linus. I mean, he's not really you know, you know tied to any commercial organization, and he's kind of like you know the uh, benevolent dictator, and he can do whatever he wants. And, and, and that's done interesting things for the project, and, and this is probably going to be a little different, but you know, it could, I think it could still be a, a good model. Yeah, I, I think taking from there, I would say, like, uh, 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 since we have moved from scratching your own itch to like doing some, uh, doing a lot of uh, commerce activity around open source software, I think uh, having uh, some decent level of marketing risk necessary, uh, but at the same time, probably it will be better off if we have Linus Torvalds like. Uh, uh, a benevolent dictator in the OpenStack community who takes the com uh, takes community's co cause and matches with the business requirement. Probably that will sort of uh, solve some of the developers' concerns. First, I'm sorry. What's the second part? It was like it's 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 vendor driven mostly not developer driven at least the criticism was like it's being it's getting to a point where it's more of vendor driven uh, my question is like is it necessarily bad or good what is your point on that um, just just to interrupt there I would say it should be user driven to Jonathan's point this morning because uh, users feed the developers feed the vendors who look for the money and it's just a virtuous cycle uh, and just to go back because I have to get my two cents in and hear the sound of my own voice uh, identifying what the bullshit is from what's real on my side of the fence because I don't talk to as many users I'm a little bit uh, abstracted from that. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, some people don't run clouds in their house, but thanks to the magic of Linux, I can. Uh, so that I can test and I try out everything. Open source is the great validator because it removes any barriers to adoption and makes it very easy to try. Uh, and then for commercial, there's only one way anybody can ever do it, and that's Lighthouse wins. You have, or, or Gatehouse customers, or Lighthouse customers, however you want to call it. So that way you see, okay, this is used in production, this is real. Right? OpenStack is real. People are using it. It's not just some pie in the sky, hypothetical Microsoft uh, Surface product that may or may not be available in 30 days. Right? We'll see. Well, and, and so to, to your question in terms of sort of vendor versus developer driven, um, I actually think to some degree that's a it's a it's almost a moot point. Right? So in other words, uh, I don't know how many of you you know saw the the, the quote at the time, but Paul Moritz. You know, who was at the time CEO of VMware, you know, was at an event in London, and you know, this is the CEO of VMware uh, talking, and basically said, "Look, if we don't give developers what we want, we're going to be irrelevant, right?" So at the end of the day, I don't care if it's coming from vendors, I don't care if it's coming from users, I don't care if it's coming actually from the developers themselves. If the developers don't want to use it, they won't. Um, that's more or less the world that we live in today, and it's becoming more so all the time. So. In other words, you know, if we have initiatives, you know, that are more vendor-driven, and certainly we've seen these before, right? The Eclipse Foundation has been uh, largely driven by, you know, a consortium of vendors and has produced more or less consistently um, developer-friendly tools over time. You know, certainly there are exceptions. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to sort of dismiss it as a concern, but I would say over the longer term, you know, any consortium, foundation, or otherwise it isn't producing tools from developers is, is not going to be relevant. Um, and as I said, I think based on the adoption that we've seen from OpenStack today and the interest, that would not be my, my primary concern. I'll put it that way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah I, mean, I, I mean, I kind of agree with Stephen. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's 
vendor or developer, but yeah, I mean, I think it, I think the cases that you have to focus on, you know, okay, what happens if um, there's conflict, right, and someone has to make a decision, right? And, and in Linux, there was some guy, you know, if it just finally got to it, he said, okay, this is gonna be the way it is, and that's the way it was. Um, and then, you know, who is going to set kind of, you know, the strategic direction or vision, right? And, and you know, so I think some things like that aren't necessarily done by a committee of vendors. So, um, you know, maybe the foundation will, will have some role in that. Yeah, I, will, I, I agree with all of them that uh, I, I don't care if it's vendor driven or uh, developer driven. But uh, regarding the criticism against vendor, uh, the OpenStack being a, a vendor driven community, I want to look at it from a totally different angle. Like uh, Linux, it was mostly user driven because they, they, they were scratching their itch. The end users were using the system. Uh, and uh, that's why we, had, we saw a lot of users contributing to it and uh, becoming de de developers to different parts of uh, those, those kind of open source software. But now we have moved from uh, s uh, taking care of the needs of the users to taking care of the needs of the enterprises and service providers. It's a completely different dynamics here. So uh, when it happens, uh, th there'll be participation from the vendors, there'll be participation from the service providers and uh, enterprise, enterprise, uh, enterprises. Uh, so like uh, you will see more employees of these organizations coming into participation than act, uh, end users who, who are developing the software for for a, as a hobby. So uh, I think there's a change in the dynamics and uh, people need to understand and appreciate that fact before they sort of uh, criticize uh, vendor development. And just to talk about Linux for a second, it's important to realize that Linus doesn't actually code anymore, right? He doesn't actually introduce net te new technology. He's the gatekeeper, the traffic manager, and the guy who's really good for guys like me because he calls, you know, storage Satan and, and evil companies like SCO, the smoking crack organization, all kinds of other things. It is the vendors in the Linux community and always has been the vendors that drive that forward, but there is that you know benevolent dictator at the top, which is really quite amazing. And now Eclipse is really interesting because Eclipse, and you know Mike Milinkovich as well as I do, exists as an organization to build open source software on which vendors like Intel SAP, et cetera, can then commercialize software. If that is the structure goal of the OpenStack Foundation, to have you know an open stack base on which vendors can build commercial software, then so be it. I don't know that that is or isn't. I think OpenStack can and will stand on its own. There are very, very few people that I know that use Eclipse core on its, actually there are some for Android, but usually they're using something on top, an extension, commercial extension always. And that's just how you use any Eclipse project. Probably I'll take this opportunity to win, win my frustration about the pundits out there. The thing is, they all hate Richard Stallman because he's a but uh, when they uh, uh, wear their pundit hat, punditry hat, like uh, they talk like Richard Stallman saying that, hey, vendors are bad and all those things. I think it's, there's some level of uh, either lack of understanding or hypocrisy involved here. So I think pundits who are uh, criticizing uh, OpenStack kind of projects for vendor uh, involvement should rethink their strategy. Mm -hmm. Openness is to OpenStack like conservation is to conservatives. Krish. Do you, do you want to uh, do you want to talk a little bit about? This? Uh, let me first make it clear that it was a tweet. I just made after hearing that from somebody because I I, I, I like the tone of the tweet, so that's why I tweeted yeah, it. I, I know. It was I'm not my personal opinion, but having said that, uh, mm -hmm. I think there is a level of uh, marketing going on about open openness and open stack. I, I keep hearing from people that, hey, if you install OpenStack, that means you have a perfectly open system available to you and uh, you are not locked in and blah, 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 all those uh, marketing things. But uh, let's take the case of HP. So they, they, ha they have taken OpenStack, but they have built some proprietary, so, uh, 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 they have added proprietary code to it, which they haven't contributed back to the community. So like uh, when you use their services, it is not as easy as taking, taking it uh, from a provider who is using vanilla open st uh, OpenStack uh, distro and moving it to another vanilla open so OpenStack distro. There is some uh, level of work involved, some level of cost involved, and these things are getting washed under the marketing that's going on here. So that is something which uh, you need to take into account. But having said that, it's much better than having a proprietary software and being completely clueless and getting locked in there. So, uh, but uh, I just wanted to warn people that uh, the, there is quite a bit of marketing uh, going on about openness in the OpenStack ecosystem. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I think this whole the whole open cloud thing, right? I mean, who knows what an open cloud is, right? I mean, I mean, how do you define it? And, and I think, I think if you know, for you know, in a lot of ways, I, I don't know if the open cloud really exists in, in the terms that people say. Well, um, you know, what does that mean? Every, everything is a, an, a, an official standard, and and it's you know, th you know, open stack should be compatible with this cloud and that cloud and that cloud. And um, you know, I, I don't know if those things are really realistic. I mean. Have we ever had any of that kind of compatibility in IT? I mean, you know, compatibility's already been really difficult, even between different flavors of Linuxes. And you know, I mean, I mean, it's still better going from you know Linux to Linux and Linux to Windows. But you know, no one ever said, "Hey, Linux, you know, you should you should really be you know really you know a lot more portable and, and, and you know make yourself interoperable with Windows and, and Unix." Uh, you know, and there's only so much you can do, right? And 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 who who's going to drive that forward, right? I mean, the standards organizations aren't really going to do it, or they're not going to do it fast enough. Um, so, you know, I think when you look at projects like, like OpenStack, you know, if you think of openness, I mean, that's probably about as open as you're going to get, right? I mean, you, you know, let's, let's make this stuff, you know, make it open source, get all these people to contribute, whoever wants to contribute can contribute and, and have a community. And, um, you know, and we'll try and make it work with as many things uh, as we can or who wants to, you know, let us make it work with it. So, I mean, that's probably as, as best as you're going to get. So, I mean, I think it really depends, you know, what you're talking about when you mean open. But, um, I mean, I think the word is so abused now. It doesn't really, well, doesn't really mean anything. You know, and just to pick up on that, I would certainly agree with the statement that, you know, compatibility is a relatively loose term, right? So, in other words, uh, anybody in the room ever do J2E implementations? Okay, so a handful of people in the room. Those people probably know that if you take two J2E platforms and try to move an application from one to another, a whole bunch of things are going to break. Um, you know, and that's sort of within a standard, right? So that's sort of understood. I think most people, you know, in the industry will will understand that, right? You know, you go from one version, um, uh, you know, of Windows, you know, for example, to another. Some things break. Same with Linux. Same with you know Mac and so on. Um, all of that said, I think that the wild card with with OpenStack is basically the licensing. Right, so Linux obviously has a reciprocal style license, which means that uh, I can't ship and distribute a sort of materially different uh, sort of, well, I shouldn't say that. I can, I can ship something different, but I have to release my changes under exactly the same license. Um, so anything imp I improve, anything I change, anything I edit has to be made available under those same terms so that basically everybody has the opportunity to work off the same platform. OpenStack, obviously, I'm sure most of you in the room know, uh, is permissively licensed. And so I, I have no such obligations from a licensing perspective, which allows me to do different things. So the question I think is going to be for the community, for the vendors, for the users, and ultimately for the developers is, you know, is that going to be a problem? And if it is a problem, you know, how do you go about solving that? You know, because we, we've solved problems like this before. J2E, as much as I just bashed it, was a workable solution to that problem. You could ultimately port with a minimal level of frustration from, from one platform to another. So, you know, the last thing I ever want to do is recreate J2E, God forbid. But, you know, is there, if we end up having this problem, are we going to see, for example, uh, standards emerge, uh, you know, which are, you know, if you're adhering to, you know, this subset or this superset of APIs, um, great, you know, you carry the OpenStack certification. If you're not, you don't. And obviously we're moving in that direction with the creation of the foundation and so on. I just yeah. wanted to put in one thing before we jump in on that. Uh, open in a world where a company like Oracle, which locks everybody in the database, and Microsoft, which locks everybody in on everything, can claim to be open, it means nothing, right? But from my experience, open means only one thing in the cloud world, and that's uh, workload portability. When VMware, which may or may not be an open company, I can take my workload, vMotion it from one to the other. Can I do that in the open stack context? I know I can export it out as plants or take that image, move it somewhere else. But that's what people care. Really, it's that workload portability. If I can move it back and forth, private to public, hybrid here, there, back, forth, sideways, that's the matter. Licensing is a marvelous topic. I believe that GPL is mother, father, and everything in between. I know OpenStack will never go GPL, and that's fine and nice. I wish I could get Richard Stallman here one year. But <laughs> workload portability is what matters to operations people, I think, because you care that you can move it for whatever reason. We have a question in the audience.
I'll take a crack at the first one. I think, you know, ultimately, you know, are you know, sort of the name and trademark, are they sufficient? Um, I, I, no, I don't believe they are. You know, in the sense that there are, and, and this is not, you know, through the fault of, of the folks in the room who are working on it, you know, or the folks in the room who are employed by the foundations. It's, it's you know, simply the fact that everybody in here who's implemented technology knows that there are, are literally tens of thousands of moving pieces, right? And inevitably, you know, when you have deltas between, you know, one implementation and another, there are things that are going to break, there are things that are not going to work, you know, exactly as advertised and so on. That is inevitable. I don't care how hard you try, and I, I don't care, you know, it's, you know, I mentioned J2E, they spent a lot of time on that specification, you know, trying to get it perfectly compatible, and it was not. So, you know, ultimately, I guess what I'm saying is, is that, yes, is that a step in the right direction in the sense that if you have a clearly incompatible version that is clearly breaking things across the board, you have now some means of, of um, you know, protecting your brand, right, you know, by saying, you know, hey, look, we, you know, trademark and so on. Uh, is that going to be sufficient to guarantee the kinds of, um, you know, workload portability, you know, or compatibility, cross-platform compatibility that people are looking for? Probably not. You know, you're going to need something that's more sophisticated, more, unfortunately, complicated, you know, I think, in, in the longer term. Yeah, I, mean, I think you have to look at, you know, things like compatibility as kind of, you know, is it, it's not just a yes or no, it's kind of shades of gray. It's like how much pain are you going to go through, right? And so you want to make it a reasonable, you know, it may, it may not be, you know, something that you would love to do, but it was something that it's feasible if you really had to do it and it wouldn't be too painful. So, you know, I think if, you know, if you're looking at, you know, maintaining the open stack brand, you know, I think there should be some kind of minimum level of compatibility, right? If you, in order to use it, you have to, implement, you know, these core set of APIs. And, and perhaps, you know, maybe there's even some kind of qualification or testing, right? We're going to test it, make sure it really works and really behaves, right? I mean, uh, I know Android does something like that, right? To, to be called Android, right? You have to run through these compatibility test suites. And, you know, just to make sure that, you know, if I do this, you know, operation that it really behaves in, in you know, a, a similar manner. So, you know, I, I think, I don't think you're going to, you know, but you, I mean, you don't want to go too far in that too, right? Because you don't want to stifle innovation and, and people can't, people can't do anything. But, you know, I think you have to define a core level and, um, you know, make people say, you know, at least you're going to adhere to these core things and, and maybe implement a, you know, a testing program to, to actually validate that. I think I, I agree with you. You need to make sure that uh, there is compatibility in terms of uh, lowest common set of services. So I think uh, uh, that, uh, that is critical for the very survival of open stack. And, uh, of course, you, you really don't want, as you said, uh, you don't want to really reach too far to stop it. Another question over here? Anyone? No? Okay. Um, so, one sort of final question before we wrap up here. What is the biggest challenge that you feel OpenStack will face next year, and, and do you see any major holes in the, in the ecosystem? Uh, I see uh, ch challenges coming from two fronts. One is like uh, on the perception side, there's a perception that uh, the, corp uh, the corporations involved in the OpenStack project is controlling their project and it's going to uh, sort of uh, inhibit uh, the true spirit of openness and blah, 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 all those things. So uh, I think OpenStack really needs to do something to change that perception. It's uh, partly because of the um, uh, anti-OpenStack uh, campaign that has been going on uh, in the industry. and. Uh, but uh, it's also partly uh, some of the uh, things I'm uh, seeing from the OpenStack side. For example, in the last board meeting, uh, 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 there was some talk about uh, keeping the discussion secret. So I think transparency is, is the key if you really want to take out the perception that's in the industry that uh, there is a certain level of corporate control that is going on. So it, it is critical that OpenStack addresses that problem and makes transparency the core thing. Uh, in, uh, in everything they do. And that is the only way they can gain community credibility and uh, get rid of the corporate control uh, backlash. The other one is on the te technological side. Uh, one of the biggest challenges which OpenStack faces, at least that's what I hear from uh, our uh, clients as well as from uh, people I talk with, uh, I think it's about ease of deployment. I think uh, it's, uh, there are some, I know there are some companies that are, uh, that are working on making uh, deploying OpenStack uh, very, uh, seamless. But I think that is something which uh, you need to focus on before you see large-scale adoption. Yeah, I mean, I think a, a couple challenges. So, I mean, I think um, 
on the community kind of project front is kind of deciding, you know, where to take the project, right? Because, I mean, there's a lot of people that want to do a lot of different things with it. I mean, I don't think you want to uh, go too far out of scope on certain things. And, you know, th you know, I think there has to be a decision made on, you know, what the project is really going to be in terms of cloud, right? Because I've seen kind of cloud kind of turning into a lot of different things, right? I mean, there's kind of like this Amazon-style cloud where, you know, we kind of built everything from this blank sheet of paper for a, a new set of applications. And then there's kind of, you know, clouds that are meant to do a lot of stuff with, you know, all the existing workloads that are out there, you know, and I have this piece of hardware installed and I have this SAN installed and I have this and that and I want to use it. So, you know, do you want to get into, you know, trying to work with all the existing and workloads that are out there in the hardware, you know, which can be a huge thing, or do you want to try for, you know, greenfield, uh, new style applications, you know, uh, and, and not be weighed down with legacy. So I think, I mean, I think that's that's one thing to, to look at. Um, and I agree with Chris, I think the main, the main thing I would look for next year is really, um, you know, the commercialization of OpenStack. And, and with commercialization, I think it really brings a wider audience. I mean, today it's really, um, you know, I think cloud providers, you know, people whose kind of IT is, is their business, um, it is core to their business, so they spend a lot of time in, in technology, they have their expertise to manage it um, and use it. Um, but there's a, you know, there's another set of, you know, if you think of like the enterprise market where, you know, inter, you know IT is not their business, it enables their business. Um, and so they're not really looking to build their own OpenStack. And, you know, they're looking for something that's really consumable and supportable from vendors, right? Uh, you know, how do, I, uh, how do I make it really easy to deploy and update and manage and who's going to do the security and back fist, you know, uh, backport fixes and, you know, and decide which release, you know, are, are solid releases that should go production and things like that. So, you know, I, I think that will alleviate a lot of the frustration that people have had, you know, where um, today if you wanted to do it, it's a largely kind of, you know, do-it-yourself kind of thing. And, you know, I don't think that's for, for everyone. So. I would look to see a lot more commercial activity next year and um, and, and, uh, and, and people paying for it. So. Uh, I see only two challenges, uh, fragmentation and long-term support. These are the same two challenges that Linux faced at the same stage. Uh, and Android's facing the same challenges too. You think uh, the user base on Android, there's people running two, two, three, four, and everything in between. As a developer, I know I've got to target six different versions, different screen sizes, it's all different. If OpenStack has that same kind of fragmentation, it runs down the same path. As Unix did 15 years ago, where once upon a time I could just have Unix System 5, and then, you know, we've got AIX, Solaris, and everything in between, and they're all different but not completely related, and it's challenging. Um, the long-term support issue, the Red Hat guys, and I don't think there are any Red Hat guys in the audience, but there might be, uh, they talk to me about this all the time because they like five, ten years support. That's what they like to offer to their customers. So if they are going to base their Red Hat Enterprise OpenStack release on, say, Folsom, and let's say they're going to support that for three years, five years, and then they're going to backport all these fixes back. What does that mean for fragmentation and long-term support for everybody else? That's going to be an interesting challenge as there'll be different versions, different things. And I think, you know, this innovation that came in in this last cycle with Quantum, and I, and I hear a lot of talks where people are moving from, you know, Nova Compute and the, the Nova networking stack to Quantum, that kind of shift in a long-term support model won't be possible from the early adopters that help to drive this great uh, acceleration in the last two years. So that will be a real challenge as you get more adoption. I, I would basically just agree with that. I think uh, there are, you know, any number of challenges, you know, for the project that we could talk about, you know, certainly um, uh, I know the, the Gartner um, piece was referenced this morning and some of the critiques that they had and so on, you know, particularly about the technical, um, you know, aspects of the project. You know, to me, those are all you know solvable problems. You know, same with uh, you know Chris's you know sort of perceptions of vendor involvement and so on. Um, that that is a concern. You know, but again, I think that is a solvable problem. The the long term sort of challenge for me is, is fragmentation. Uh, you know, I think it's it's going to be very interesting to see how the project evolves moving forward, uh, because you know the the sort of volume and number of participants at some point could be a double edged sword, right? Because right now it's great, it's momentum. You have, you know, contributions flowing in, you have more interest, more visibility, more marketing, and so on. But the fact is, is that at the end of the day, a lot of these parties are going to have very different agendas, uh, and in many cases, competing agendas. You know, so, you know, are we going to end up, you know, to, to borrow, you know, sort of Sean's Android analogy, you know, with, you know, sort of one, you know, Android flavor, and then any of you who have Android flavors that come from different vendors with the crap that they install on it, um, you know, sort of completely different experiences, you know, based off the same, 
uh, pieces, which experientially that may be fine, but if you then have you know, sort of issues with porting workloads, that's a problem. So, you know, anything that the uh, uh, folks in the audience can do, you know, to sort of target um, and stave off fragmentation, I think is, that to me is the biggest challenge. All right. Yeah. Clock is ticking how? Uh, I would not agree with that. Um, I don't. I don't know exactly who said it had a year. Um, it, time is moving by, right? And you know, it, it's the, the danger in situations like that typically becomes if you have to compete with a ubiquitous incumbent, you're screwed, um, or you're not screwed. It just takes much longer. Uh, I, I don't see that here. I don't see really anybody running away with the market. You know, to the standpoint that you know, OpenStack, if, if it's not, you know, exactly where it needs to be six months from now or even twelve months from now you know, is, is doomed. But, I mean, certainly it is a fast-moving industry, so in, this, in that sense, yeah, you, you need to move pretty quickly. Uh, I think you're talking about uh, the need for revenue generation in OpenStack community. Uh, the article that came in Network World uh, probably a few days back, I think uh, it's, uh, it's a short-sighted comment uh, for, uh, from the analysts, and uh, uh, he, uh, the analyst, I, I responded to the article there itself, but uh, the analyst didn't, uh, uh, differentiate between the billions of dollars spent by Amazon's, Microsoft's, and VMware compared to probably a few millions or even less spent uh, by vendors in the OpenStack community. And there is no real pressure to make money uh, within a few months. So I think uh, he has got it wrong. All right. That's it. Then uh, I guess that's it. Thanks, guys.